Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite proportional brake controller on a 2019 Toyota Highlander. The Red Arc is a awesome brake controller and the main reason why is going to be the footprint. Most brake controllers, when you think of them, you probably have scars somewhere on your knees from hitting them as you get in because they mount down low and sometimes they can be in a nice position, but honestly it does get in the way when you're getting in and out. And over time, it's just one thing that's kind of in the way. If you can eliminate that, get a bigger foot or a smaller footprint that looks nice and OEM, but still have all the functions, why not? And that's where this one comes into play. You can see it's extremely simple with just this knob. You can turn it to adjust your gain and it has all the controls that you may want to have. Now this is gonna be good for one to three axles and it's proportional. So once you set it and as when you hit the brakes on the vehicle, the brakes are going to apply on the trailer at the same time with no delay and it's going to be proportional to how hard you're braking and that's done with the module once you mount the module up it simply learns its position there and then it will move accordingly based on that weight transfer and it's going to apply those brakes now you can also have user controlled you can have your manual override just by pushing and swapping over from auto proportional to manual control is going to be simple and just the push of a button. Another cool thing is when you have it set to wherever you're at, it's going to change colors based on how strong it is. And also as you break on the proportional, it's going to get brighter as you get harder braking. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it'll let you know pretty quick that it is braking and that is braking accordingly. Now, as far as the installation goes, this isn't too terribly hard to do as far as the brake controller. In fact, we actually used a Red Arc little panel here that uses the factory knockout plate location to make it nice and clean and OEM looking. You don't even have to drill. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps and hopefully that helps you get the brake controller installed on your vehicle. Now to get a brake controller to work on your Highlander, you're gonna actually need to run a ETBC7 kit. And that's gonna be wiring that's gonna give you the four pole and allow us to tie into a brake signal via wires. And that's gonna plug into this harness here, which will go into the module of the brake controller. Now the ETBC7 kit, is a little tricky to run, but I'm gonna give you a quick overview, and that way you can get an idea of what you'll need to do before getting your brake, ins brake controller installed. The ETBC7 kit is gonna tie into a four pole, so you're gonna want to make sure that you run that first, and it's gonna give us the ability to not only have the four pole still, but also a seven way plug, which is gonna give us that brake output signal. Now, what we've done is take our four pole connection that's gonna be wired into this harness and plug it into the four pole that was already on the vehicle. From there, there's gonna be a few extra wires. Our yellow, we're not gonna be using, so I've actually just kind of taped that up and that's gonna leave us with a black and blue wire. On well, the black is gonna run to the battery to get that 12 volts power, and blue is gonna be that wire that we're gonna get the signal from the brake signal, and that's gonna allow us to put the brakes on the trailer as we're towing. So the rest of it is just gonna be some of this wire here that's in the sheath. So we're gonna need to make a connection to our two wires on the plug. So the wires in the sheets connection are gonna be black and white. So we're gonna keep black with black. That's gonna to run to our power. And then the white is gonna tie into the blue and that's gonna run eventually to our stoplight switch on the brake pedal to get that signal. So what I did was just ran our coated wire here, just kind of along to where there's no moving parts or hot parts that it's made contact with. So I just went over the uh, cross member here and just kind of made my way along over and alongside the vehicle. I've tucked it underneath this underbody tray and then kind of tucked back here, there's gonna be a grommet and that's how I made access to the inside of the vehicle where we need to take our white wire. So that's gonna be, again, that's connected to that blue and gonna connect to our brake light signal. Now there is a black wire going into here, but that's looped back from the engine bay. That's getting our battery 12 volt. So from that uh, uh, protected wire, we have that white going inside and then the black just kind of continues on into the engine bay and I'll show you where that routes. Now I routed our black power wire up through the engine bay and I used just spare airline tube that I had just kind of running along. You're gonna have your steering column as far and as well as 
suspension, and pretty much any moving parts. You're going to want to make sure to stay away from those. And the best way to do that is just find a nice clean path to run this and zip tie it up along the way. That way it doesn't make contact. Now our power wire routes over and this is just to kind of make it clean and it's going to go over to our circuit breaker and the circuit breaker is going to give us that connection point to where we can tie in and then it's going to give us the power from the battery so you have a silver post and and then a copper post silver post is going to be marked auxiliary so we're going to tie into that using our ring terminal here and i just cut the wire and put it onto here now on each circuit breaker there's going to be a printed just a little thing on the side that's going to tell you the amperage. We're going to be using the 40 amp for that power wire that we ran up. And then from here, I just made a little jumper cable uh, from our bronze connector and then made over to our ring terminal. Now, I'm not going to be connecting this to our 12 volt power yet until we have all of our connections made. Now, the other circuit breaker is going to be running from the battery to the inside to give us power for the brake controller. So we use the 30 amp. So to mount these up, pretty easy, just a self-tapping screw. Um, so you can get these on here and then we'll just make those connections with this 10 millimeter. So from there, that's why we have these two power wires. It's basically just that power going to the 40, jumping over, and then we also have this one going back and then feeding back into the car. So that's where we saw that wire go back in through that floor grommet, which will bring us to the inside of the vehicle so we can make the connections to the module wire. Now, in order to get these through that grommet, you are gonna have to take off this little kick panel over here, and it's just gonna be some plastic tabs. It also is gonna attach to this little scuff panel, and that may come off at the same time, which is fine, um, but you're gonna wanna separate those and then peel this carpet back. There's a little tab here that clips into here. So just peel that as well as this insulation or sound deadening, and then we'll be able to poke those through the grommet. So now that we have these two wires, we're also gonna need to find our brake light cold side switch and up top there's going to be a plunger that attaches to the brake pedal um, and you'll see it's just a cylinder we're going to unplug the top there as we need to tie into the brake uh, brake light wire on the cold side so i'm going to go ahead i'll pull this down and i'll show you which wire we need to tie into there's going to be just a little push tab here and this is what that plug is going to look like so look for the plunger this should be attached to it just push this in and pull it out now i've pulled back some of that wire loom and tape and also to get a little bit more access to make it easier i pulled this panel down and that's just going to be two phillips head or two 10 millimeter screws here and then that's going to just pop out so it gives you a little bit more room to work with and I've gone ahead and tested to make sure that we have the proper wire to tie into. It's gonna be on our pin one here. It's the thicker green wire. So there's a bunch of different greens uh, as well as a light green, but look for the larger gauge. And that's gonna be the one that we're gonna use a uh, connector to tie into with a quick splice. So we have this, we have our two wires ran up. So now it's time to attach to our plug for the module. So we have four wires off of our plug here and I'll walk you through each of them. So the first one is going to be our black wire and you're gonna see it says positive supply wire. So this is gonna tie into that black wire that uh, ran to our circuit breakers and again make sure that you're not tied on to the battery terminal You don't want to cut into a wire that's going to be charged. So our black will go with black pretty easy there Our white we're going to need to attach a ring terminal and that's going to be just a ground So I'm going to try to find a factory ground along here But if not we're able to mount it to anywhere on the chassis that's going to be bare metal So we got a bunch of different options down here Moving along, we have our blue wire. Now our blue wire is gonna be the actual brake controller. This is gonna jump into uh, the seven pole and that's gonna be done with our white wire. So as we saw that uh, protected wire that we ran, the white initially tied into blue, so we're just jumping back into that blue. And that's gonna leave us with our red. And our red is where we're going to tie into that brake light switch. So on that plug that we saw, that thick green wire, we're going to be using a quick splice to get in there um, and attach those so we can get that signal. So I'm going to go ahead, kind of get this all uh, connected up, and then I'll show you that before we continue on. 
So you can see I've made my quick splice connection into that brake signal, that larger green wire, and I put our red wire to that. So now I can go ahead and plug that back in. So that one's attached. Our white wire, I just simply put our ring terminal and mounted that up with a self-tapping screw on the frame of the body. Um, we also have our black, which is attached to our black, so that's gonna be our 12 volt. And then again, our blue is gonna go to our white wire that we fed up through the grommet. So now what we can do is grab our module, and you'll see we have another port and then this plug, so we can plug this in. But this other port is going to connect to the brake controller knob. So we need to route this where we're gonna mount this up. And the great part about the Toyotas and some Mitsubishis is it actually has the ability to, uh, you can pick up the Red Arc um, filler panel and that's gonna allow you to knock out the knockout plate from the factory and just pop it into place rather than having to drill a hole. So um, I'll go ahead and grab that and show you where we're gonna mount that up. So this is that specific knockout plate. It looks very similar to the one in the kit, but as I mentioned, this goes into a factory spot. So that way you don't have to drill a hole. And even though the Red Arc takes up very little space, it's nice to not have to drill a hole in your dash. And this is just gonna pop into a factory spot. And that way, if you ever wanna move this to another vehicle, you can put your factory knockout plate back in and be able to pull that out without leaving any holes. So ours is going to mount up on the left of the steering wheel. And you'll see we have a blank one right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get that popped out so we can get our wires ran down. And you can kind of just put a flat head or a, just a nice way to pry this open without scratching your plastic. And it should come out pretty easy. And you can see that's what it looks like. So ours is gonna pop right in place. But before we put that in, we're gonna wanna get this wire ran down and connected to the module, or I'm sorry, our brake controller. So this plugs in white to white here. And then what we're gonna do is just take this wire and feed it down. And that way we can connect it into our module. Before we get our brake controller actually mounted up with that plate, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of bundle up our wires, kind of get them zip tied up and make sure it's all nice and clean. And we can also go ahead and get those panels mounted back up. Now, as far as mounting the module, you'll see there's some little slots here. So this can mount in any position as long as it's uh, not gonna move around. Yeah, so zip ties over you know any bracket that you find will probably work. Just make sure it's not gonna have any issues uh, with any of the brake uh, assembly or the steering. So just make sure you're out of the way of moving things. Um, and just running some zip ties through here, zipping that down should be just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all cleaned up. So I plugged into my module and I used just this little vent here. Uh, it looks like the feet um, where the vent comes out here. Uh, zipping it, tying it up to that is gonna be a good spot because it's gonna be nice and solid. It's also clear away from the pedal um, and it's just kind of up out of the way. The rest of the wires I just kind of bundled up and made sure to zip tie them so it's gonna have clearance of the emergency brake here. Turn this all the way counterclockwise, that way it's zeroed out. And then we're gonna fit this in there. It can only go one way, so if it's crooked, just flip that around and that's what it, we have going on here. So all the way turned to the left means that that is gonna be at zero. So the great part about this is you can kind of mount the knob exactly how you want it. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, uh, there's a sticker here that's included and this is gonna just have a little point to let us know where it's zeroed out. You don't have to use it, it's kind of up to you. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this placed on there and that way when we put our knob in place, it's going to um, indicate exactly where we're at. So we'll just peel this back. And I'll get this on first, kind of centering this up. And in fact, sometimes I like to um, raise it up a little bit because it's gonna be more visual up top where you're gonna see it. That way you can kind of see that indicator mark a little bit better. So again, with this zeroed out, we'll go ahead and I'm gonna just place it right there and then I can peel off the rest of it. And then to hold this in place, we're gonna be using this little plastic nut here and it's threaded so it should just spin around the controller. And we don't have to crank this down too tight. You can put a socket on here, 
but honestly hand tight is probably going to be plenty on this it's going to hold that in place so what we'll do is go ahead push this in it should just snap in place and then we can take our knob since we know this is going to be where it's reading i'll just take our zero and line that up with it just making sure this is turned again all the way counterclockwise before we do that and then we'll just push that in place so to get these on the positive terminal we'll just take a 12 millimeter socket and just loosen this up and then we can place these on there Now that we're hooked up to 12 volt power, the best way to check to make sure that we have it hooked up properly is to just push the button and we should see it illuminate in a nice blue color there, which is a good sign. So I'm going to go ahead and get our panels back in. Now something that you're going to want to do is if you're hooking up right away to your trailer and trying to use it as soon as you install it, you're going to want to calibrate it. And what you're going to do is just plug in your trailer to that seven pole and you're going to want to get up to speed about I'd say 10 to 15, maybe 20 miles per hour, and then apply the brakes. It'll be flashing a blue and green as it's trying to find that home where you've mounted the module. The module can kind of go wherever as long as it's solidly mounted, and then it's going to learn that position based on that braking. Now, if you aren't hooking up to your trailer, no problem. Just drive around as normal, and it's going to learn itself anyway. And that was a look and installation of the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite Proportional Brake Controller on a 2019 Toyota Highlander.